Welcome back to the exciting book of Genesis. Hallelujah. All right, we're making our way through the book of Genesis, and we are on the big 4 Oh, Hallelujah. Making our way on through. So, let's jump right in. Let me have my first reader read Genesis 40, verses 1 through 4, please. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their Adonai, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in, in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them, and they continued a season in the in war. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, so first off, you know, we're, we're told that some things came to pass, and that the butler of the king of Mitzrayim. Now, Mitzrayim speaks to devil's straits. Now, spiritually speaking, Mitzrayim or Egypt speaks to where? Jerusalem. Thank you. Hallelujah. So, um, so we see right off the spiritual picture involved here involves Jerusalem, you know. And now it says, um, his baker had offended their Adonai, the king of Mizraim. And it says, Pharaoh was brought against his two officers, against the butler, the chief of the butlers and the chief of the bakers, all right? So, you know, now, the thing that should stand out to us, you know, that scripture is trying to get across the spiritual picture here is that, you know, both of these deal with Food. Butler in the Hebrew is, is maske. Maske, number 4945, speaks to a cupbearer and it speaks to one who gives drink. You know, and the baker, the word baker here is afa, you know, number 644, meaning to cook. So we're talking about, you know, the two that was over the drinks and the food of Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh means the great house. Now, we already done uh, aforementioned that, that uh, Egypt. The spiritual Egypt is Jerusalem. So what's the great house of Jerusalem? The temple of Elohim. Amen. You know, so we see this is a this is actually, you know, uh, a parable within the dream, you know, concerning Jerusalem and the temple of Elohim. And the two, the two cooks, well, the one cook and the one that's the one that's over the cooking and one that's over the drinks. You know, so we're talking about food and drink, you know, essentially bread and wine. You know, and so that's symbolism of the priesthood. Because in the great house of Jerusalem, in the temple, the one who serve the bread and the wine are the priests. Are they not? That's right. Okay? You know, so that said. You know, we can see that this is a prophecy concerning the chief butler and baker of Yahuwah. To put it another way, it's a prophecy concerning the two priesthoods of Elohim. The priesthood of Melchizedek and the Levitical priesthood. You know, the two that was responsible for the bread and the wine. Now, it is the duty of the priesthoods of Elohim to present Yah's bread and wine. Hence, we see Melchizedek doing so with Abraham. When we go back to Genesis 14, 18 through 20, it says, And Melchizedek, son of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was a priest of the Most High Elohim. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High Elohim, possessor of the heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High Elohim, which have delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. So we see the priest, in, uh, Melchizedek, you know, is bringing forth offering bread and wine. Now, spiritually speaking, the bread speaks to Yah's teachings and instructions and the wine to his covenant. You know, now, um, hence, we, we see when, when Yah gave his covenant, he passed out a cup. You know, he was, he passed out a cup, you know, um, and, and, and he told that his followers to likewise pass that cup around, you know, because, you know, you, so I guess in a spiritual sense, you can say they were cupbearers. <clears throat> Just like we're talking about the chief cupbearer. You follow me? You know, so, you know, um, spiritually speaking, bread speaks to, 
to the teachings and instructions. The wine speaks to his covenant, you know, and the chief baker so speaks to the priesthood who was ordered to freshly bake Yah's holy bread daily. You know, the Levitical priesthood, they were the ones who was instructed and um, and responsible for baking the bread. What bread? The bread that was supposed to be break, um, baked daily, which was the show bread. Exodus 25, 23 through 24 says, Thou shalt also make a table of shit on wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, a cubit the breadth thereof, a cubit and a half the height thereof, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. Make it thereto a crown of gold round about. And then we jump down to verse 30. It says, And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. So, you, you know, I want you to see that these were the bakers. This, these were the chief bakers of Elohim. These were the chief bakers of the great house. Pharaoh means the great house. These were the chief bakers of the great house. The chief baker of the temple of Elohim. Can you see that? I pray you can see that. Yahushua is our high priest in the order of the priesthood of Melchizedek. And his ecclesia is like unto the chief butler or cupbearer. In Luke twenty two seventeen. 17, you know, it teaches us, it says that our Messiah, it says and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this, is, uh, take this and divide it among yourselves. And if we jump down to verse 20, it says, likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Yahushua took the cup of Elohim, he filled it with his blood, that is his new covenant, and gave it to his ecclesia to not only drink of, but to share with their brethren, thereby making them Elohim's cupbearers as well. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Hallelujah. Now, of course, he was the chief cupbearer, you know, but, you know, they were cupbearers as well. Amen? Yeah. You know, and so, you know, I pray that you can see the symbolism that's involved here because it's you know, it's essential to understanding the story behind the story, so to speak. Let me have my next reader read Genesis 40, verses 5 through 7, please. And they dreamed the dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were in, that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? Hallelujah. All right, so said they dreamt a dream. Each of them had a dream, and each man according to the interpretation of his dream. You know, um, and so Joseph came in, and he's, he's, he's seeing that, you know, they were sad. You know, both of the butler and the cupbearer, they're sad, and he asked them, Wherefore look so sadly today? And if we continue on with verses 8 through 11, we'll hear their re response. Let me have my next reader read um, Genesis 40, 8 through 11, please. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to Elohim? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me. And in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Hallelujah. All right, so let's take a look at this and see if we can't break it down even further. You know, it says... Um, there was a vine before me. Now, this is a spiritual picture of Yahushua's ecclesia, of Yahushua um, taking a cup or a covenant of Elohim and pressing it in, uh, into it. You know, his ecclesia, which was the cup bearers, and they, were, they would take the cup of um, Elohim, they would press into it their, their grapes, their love, their joy, their peace, their long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance even as Yahushua did. Do those things sound familiar? You know, those are the fruit of the Spirit. Those are the grapes. You know, now, let us um, consider who the vine is. Yochanan 15, 1 and 2 teaches us who the, um, verse 1 teaches us who the vine is. 
Um, Yoke 9, 15, 1 says, I am the true vine. This is our Messiah speaking here. Yeah. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Yeah. You know, so yeah. now even as Joseph said, you know, and this is the um, what sets the precedence for for um, for this. You know, even as Joseph said, uh, where did he say it at? Uh, uh, um, he said in verse 8, do not interpretations belong to Elohim? Tell me them, I pray you. Right? So the interpretations of dreams belong to who? Elohim. Elohim. All right, so now I'm going to bring you up to speed to to um, to my mindset. Yochanan 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim, and the word was what? Elohim. Elohim. Okay, so interpretations of dreams belongs to Elohim. If Elohim is the word, then interpretations belong to the word. Can you see that? So if you want to interpret your dreams, look to the word. You got to be well versed in the word in order to do it, but you look to the word. And this one is no different. It says the vine was before him, so we look to the word. What does the word say? Yochanan 15.1, I am the true vine, our Messiah says, and my father is the husbandman. So we can see that this dream was also about a vine, obviously, you know, and that vine was Yahushua. And he says in the vine, and in the vine were three branches, and it was um, it was as though it budded and her blossom shot four and the forth and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes, you know, and Yochanan 15 2 tells us every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purges it, and it may um that it may bring forth more fruit. I should have had the verse that said, you know, ye are the branches. But anyway, ye are the branches. Amen. Amen. Yahshua is divine, and we're supposed to be the branches, and we're supposed to bear, bring forth much fruit. Amen. Amen. You know, and so you know, what kind of fruit are we supposed to bring forth? The fruit of the ruach, the fruit of the spirit, because our our true vine is a spiritual vine, is it not? You know, and we're supposed to bring forth spiritual fruit: love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. You know, and so. This is what we squeeze into the cup. And we, pre we present it, you know, to the great house, the temple of Elohim. Where's the temple now today? Ye are the temples of Elohim. Amen. Yeah. You know, so we're to give one another love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen. Yeah. Emphasis on the long suffering. Uh. <laughs> Amen. The patience. Mm -hmm. You know, or temperance, you know. So we're going to emphasize some of those, you know. So that's what we're to do. Now, within the dream, we see the vine budding, blossoming, bearing fruit, showing that Yahushua's ecclesia remained within the true vine, and eventually they would bring forth fruit. And that's how we got here. Amen. You know, the vine did not die. You know, this is how, how we got here. You know, but I want you to see, you know, how this relates, you know, to our Messiah. Because um, as we've been going through the previous chapters and we've been equating Yosef to the Messiah, amen? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been equating Yosef to, um, to the Messiah, you know, because he's a type of the Messiah. You know, and so here it is, you know, we see him going before Pharaoh, which is the great house. So you literally see a picture of Yahshua going to the temple. Can you see that? I pray you can see that. Well, you're about to see it anyway, because um, uh, he hasn't gotten there yet. Um, okay, and Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. All right. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. Now, like unto the king of um, Mizraim, the chief butler, Yahushua's um, ecclesia have been put away and prophesied to return after three days. How many of you know that the ecclesia is not around now today? There's a lot of people who claim to be the church or the ecclesia, but the ecclesia is not around. Because when, you, when we look at um, the ecclesia and the duties of it and what it, what it was, we see something vastly different than what we find today. You know, so if 
you know, if anyone claim to be the ecclesia, they are in name only. You know, it is not in conjunction with scripture. You know, so we look to Hosea 6, 1 through 3. It says, come, let us return to Yahuwah. Hallelujah. I'm going to say that again. Come, let us return to Yahuwah. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know Yahuwah. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto as the rain, as the latter, and former rain unto the earth. Hallelujah. You know, so, you know, we see, spiritually speaking, after three days, you know, those cupbearers are going to be raised up again in the third day, even in conjunction with the dream that's being given here. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine hand and restore thee unto thy place. So, you know, yes, each day is as a thousand years. You know, we we are past the, uh, or close to being past the 2,000 year mark. We are almost in that third day. Amen? Hallelujah. So, you know, uh, verses 14 and 15 of Genesis 40, but think on me. When it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this, out of this house where I indeed, I, for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews and here also have I done nothing that should put me into the dungeon. You know, and so, you know, uh, that's what the cupbearers are supposed to do. They're supposed to make mention of Yosef, who represents who? Yahshua in the temple. You know, that's huge. That's huge. You know, that's what they're supposed to do. But let's see what happens. Um, verse 16 and 17, my next reader, please. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of, ba of baked meat for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, well, yeah, we're going to praise y'all anyway. I know it don't sound great, yeah. but, you know. So hereby we see the chief baker, that is the Levitical priesthood. You know, now he has three baskets of white bread on his head. Now the white represents righteousness. Bread, you know, is teachings and instructions. You know, so uh, we can see that he has teachings and instructions of righteousness in his head. Can you see that? You know, or, you know, um, so. And... Verse 17 says, the uppermost basket was full of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. You know, so the upper basket was full of baked meats for Pharaoh. So this is, this is the meat, you know, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon his head. Okay, now, here it is, he has... He has some bread, some righteous bread, but on top of the bread, he has some baked meats. That is, he has some flesh. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. He has some flesh on top of the righteous bread. You know, and so it says the birds eat them out of the basket of the head. Now, the birds actually represent demons. Mm -hmm. You know, um, now... Where do we get that from? Matthew Yahoo 13, 3 and 4. You know, it's a parable that the Messiah um, spoke. All right. He is the prince of the airways, right? You know, now, Matthew Yahoo 13, 3 and 4, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. You know, so we see the Messiah speaking about these these files. You know, 
Now, he gives the interpretation thereof. So let's jump down to 18 and 19 of Matthew 13. He says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then come up the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Okay, so here it is. We're taught that the fowls of the air are likened unto the wicked one and his cronies. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when we see here, when it speaks of the birds eating the flesh out of his head, we see that it's, it speaks to the birds, the demons eating you know, that which is um, that out of out of his head or eating out of his head, you know, um, not good. Right. Right. You know, so. So we're going to see that this 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 is not going to be a good interpretation, you know, because you don't want demons eating out your head. Amen. 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 You want to keep demons out your mind. That's you want right. to keep demons Amen. out your head. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't want them eating nothing from out your head. So, let's see the interpretation, verses 18 and 19. And Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days, and yet within three days Pharaoh, lift, Pharaoh shall lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree. That's why they were eating the, his, this, the flesh, you know, that was, that was on, on top of his head. Because his head was lifted up off of him, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Mm. Not good. Not a good interpretation at all, is it? Nope. You know, now the word birds is oath in the Hebrew. It um, speaks to a bird that's covered by feathers, um, cover, covering, um, with, uh, covering with wings or covering with wings, you know. And so this is what it's, it's really is telling us, you know. They covered themselves with with um with wings they covered themselves with feathers you know when they should have been covering themselves with yah you know and it says uh eat the acre flesh now um from off thee now this word flesh is bizarre number 1320 it, it means flesh but it also it comes from the, this root means to announce or preach the good news now you think that's by coincidence this is the old testament it's not the new testament this is the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's just coincidence? Mm -hmm. You know, here it is. The birds, you know, are consuming the flesh from out, out of his mind. It's consuming the good news from out of his mind. What is the good news? The good news is the gospel concerning the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, what did Yahshua say in the parable? He says... He says, uh, in the parable, he says, when anyone hears the word of what? The kingdom. And understandeth it not, then come of the wicked one and catch up away that which was sown in his heart or his head. Can you see they're saying the same thing? Yeah. It's the same thing. You know, but this is like a thousand years earlier or two thousand years earlier. You know, and that's that's what I always you know try to get people to see that you know you know even though yes Yah, you know um, our Messiah was Elohim, he was Emmanuel, Elohim with us when he was um, here on the earth. You know, but I don't believe that he was all knowing. I believe he was a man. He came through, you know, as a flesh man, and he had the same the same weaknesses and strengths that we have. You know, and you know, so how did he know what to do? You know, he, it tells us in Hebrews, he says, you know, um, you know, blood of bulls and goats, you didn't want. Mm -hmm. But you have presented me a body. Yeah. Lo, I come in the volume of the yeah. book. Yeah. This is how he knew what he was supposed to do. This is how he knew what his ministry was. This is how he, he knew, you know, what had to transpire. You know, it's because of scripture. And this is the same way we can know. You know, scripture is tomorrow's newspaper. Yes, yes. All you have to do is know how to read it. Yes. You know, so here it is. We see these things were, were um, prophesied to come about millennia 
before they actually even happened. You know, and this reminds me of, of after Yahshua had risen and he took his disciples and it says that, you know, he showed them through scripture, you know, why he had to do what he did. It's in scripture. The only scripture they had during that time was Torah. The only scripture they had was the, uh, well, I should say the Old Testament, you know, the, the um, Torah, the prophets and the writings. That's all they had. So it's in there. You have to understand it's in there. You know, so, you know, this doesn't surprise me. It amazes me. But it doesn't surprise me. It just shows the yasmus of Yah and his word and how his word truly is Elohim. You know, so Genesis 40:20 says, And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. So here it is. You know, it's Pharaoh's birthday. He's having a party, you know, and he raised both the butler, that is, the um, the uh, uh, the cupbearers and and the, uh, the baker, that is, the cook. He raised them both up and bring them both before him. You know, and said he made a feast unto his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and chief baker among his servants. You know, um, now... I want to take a little side uh, sidebar, if you would. You know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first time birthdays are mentioned in Scripture. You know, and it tells us it was Pharaoh's birthday. Now, this revelation really hit me hard. You know, I, I know y'all, y'all was he, he was speaking to me when when he showed me this. It, it, it hit me hard. You know, um, I used to love my birthday. You know, and so I, I I really wasn't trying to trying to see this, but he made it. You know, when your eyes are open, and he gives you sight, you can't help but see him. You know, and so um, Leviticus eighteen two and three it says, "Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am Yahuwah your Elohim." And in verse three it says, "After the doings of the land of Mitzrayim wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do." After the doings of the land of Mizraim, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. All right. mm -hmm. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Okay, what does he mean, after the doings? So, you know, there's no mistake about this. Let's look this up. I've taken, taken the liberty to do so. It's translated from the uh, one Hebrew word. Mahase, number 4639. It means an action, whether it's good or bad, an action. So, let's go back and insert that into Leviticus 8, 3, 18. After the actions of the land of Mitzrayim, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. So, what was Pharaoh doing? He was celebrating his birthday. I mean, am I making this up, or is this here? Uh, you know, he was celebrating his birthday. You know, and let's see what happens. Verse 20, uh, well, let me have my next reader read verse 20, verse uh, Genesis 40, verses 20 through 23, please. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave him the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he, he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so this teaches us that there's a coming a time. There's coming a time. Uh, that there's that when both Yahushua's ecclesia and the Levitical priesthood will be lifted up again, first and foremost. You know, there's there's coming a time, you know, when, when that will happen. You know, and this is when you know it gets it's going to get really interesting. 
you know, because, you know, Scripture says it, it will come to pass, you know, and verse 21 through 23 said, and he restored the chief butler, that is the cupbearer, that is those with the covenant of Yahshua, mm -hmm. unto his butlership again. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. He gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. You know, now he's going to serve in the great house, the temple of Elohim, once again. But he hanged the chief baker as Yosef had interpreted to, him, interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Yosef, but forgot him. You know, now this in turn teaches us that even though the ecclesia would be restored, they will forget all about Yahushua for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm here to tell you that the ecclesia, we're still waiting for them to be restored. Because they done forgot all about Yahushua. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they, you know, some people know him in name, but they just know him in name only. Mm -hmm. See, but a name speaks to the character, authority, and reputation of a, of a thing. You know, and so, you know, that's the that's the thing. No one's no one's walking in his character. No one's relating themselves to his character. No one's walking in his authority. No one is walking in accordance to his reputation. Because wherever he went, great things happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wherever he went, miraculous things transpired. Amen. Yeah. You know, you know now. Also take note that the chief butler, you know, was killed on Pharaoh's birthday. In fact, every time you see birthday mentioned in scripture, someone dies. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You know, I'm just saying. Say lie. That's all I have for you today. Prayer was a blessing. Yeah.